what I'm saying is that I don't know enough about the affairs of, of Michael or people. And nor do we, nor do anybody. Because the government, the supervisor in charge, the Ministry of Finance, and the companies themselves have been remiss in making clear exactly what the position is. And it seems to me that it, the position is exactly what would appear to be is a liquidity crisis. Now, I would like to make two proposals that the, the committee follow up, and it would solve the problem immediately. If the company, if Bico has a cash deficit of $20 million, and it is otherwise profitable, then why not have the company borrow $20 million, and everybody will laugh at me and say, oh, 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 Chris McGill, okay, sure, they're going to lend the bankrupt company $20 million. But get this, what you do is you have the company borrow the $20 million under a guarantee from the government of Barbados. Because if it's a supervisor of insurances who, well, I'm not saying he's proved up, but something has to be wrong in these circumstances. So, the government of Barbados should be easily able to put their name to a $20 million, $10 million facility. As far as I remember, uh, the, the administration put $10 million to, uh, to Pico Group or BAI, someone or other, in any case already, that's gone into the melee and where that's gone I don't know, unsecured credit or whatever. But if you were to make BICO cash liquid, then the people in this room wouldn't be here this evening, there wouldn't be a concern and you wouldn't be suing them. Now, if you go back and you look what government in, in America did with some of these companies that find themselves in a severe cash crisis, government put in 200 billion, 600 billion, whatever. Not Lehman Brothers. If they saved Lehman Brothers, they would have saved the, 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 the crisis. But these other companies, like Goldman Sachs and, and these other guys, they had a severe liquidity crisis. Government lent them 200 billion. Within 18 months, those companies have paid back that money, and the government has made 10% on their money. No loss to the taxpayer, no loss of employment to the millions, of the hundreds of thousands of people who work in the financial industry. So what I'm suggesting is that somehow there should be a method by which the government can extend temporary banking facilities through a guarantee to this, this cash squeeze company. And my other... In, in terms of launching any action, what you do is you put the other party on notice that you're taking the issue seriously. And outside of the action, people will take notice of the fact that they face a number of issues that will drag them into the court. Now, if, for example, you're successful in obtaining judgment, a judge decides in your favor, and you cannot fix that judgment against the assets of people, then there are a number of other options which could be pursued. I think that um, in terms of suing the government and directors, it seems to me that certainly the directors have to be brought into this action, and I discussed that when I uh, when I started off in terms of their inability to manage the process, or I say inability. In terms of the oversight process, I have to properly consider whether the supervisor of insurance is a proper party to sue, given the feedback I'm receiving here, because. We will know that when we have the full sight of the report from the Oversight Committee. And I think that as part of the process of launching any claim, once we are sure of whether we go forward, I say we, whether you go forward as a non-profit company or whether you go forward as a representative action, allows me, as a lawyer, to write pre any action to obtain the necessary reports from the parties who hold those reports. Having cited those reports will perhaps give us a clearer idea as to who was ultimately responsible for the debacle we now face, and then we can be properly informed. So there are a number of stages prior to filing a claim form which we can exploit in terms of having better information and knowing who to take action against. So perhaps that what I'm saying is that as far as I can see, the policyholders are a class of creditors. 
I love the investors. So they can commence legal action. They have the right to start or to a possibly appoint a receiver. Now, I don't know receivership law, but there has to be a position here in these circumstances where the company is insolvent, where the, where the management of the company is taken out of the hands of the shareholders or shareholder out of any company. But you're not just tackling Bible, and you're not just tackling Clico General Insurance or Life Insurance or whatever it's called, Global Life Insurance. You're, you're looking at the fact that the, the net assets of those companies, and some of those companies definitely had a very large positive net asset value. But those companies themselves are owned by CL, by Clico Holdings, by Vegas, or whatever the name of the company is. I didn't bring it up to the microphone. So, you have to have like a flowchart, a family tree, to see what the ownership interests are in these various companies before you go off talking legal action. Now, uh, I'd like to, I don't know if there was a quote that I missed when Stanley MacDonald was talking about quotes from the newspaper. But it's interesting that Mr. Leslie Haynes, you see, who was the director of the company, and who was president of the Bar Association of Barbados, uh, was very strong in commenting that the judicial system in Barbados is hopeless. It doesn't work. And I know that from first experience. And I'm sure that quite a few people in this room know that from first experience. We have a beautiful law for hope, but the system doesn't work. The system is blocked and befuddled by QCs among them, attorneys among them, who use the system to their own benefit or the benefit of their client. Now, if you have Mr. Leslie Haynes, president of the Bar Association, QC, and a past director of people, stating that we have a non-functioning judiciary, then I would suggest that the appointment of a judicial manager is an oxymoron. <laughs> With the end of this, on the moron. I'm not sure where the oxy comes from, but I know where the moron comes from. Chris, can I give you about two more minutes? Two more minutes? Yeah. I need two hours. <laughs> um, the suggestion of setting up a not-for-profit company, I can't buy into that. I don't see that that's necessary. Uh, I think that the group might benefit considerably by bringing in possibly a retired QC out of Canada uh, who has specialized in a class action, who wouldn't be involved on a long-term basis, but who would give you the broad picture of the best way of going about this. Um, the, I early any, any, any particular reason why Canada? Because Canadian law is based on, sorry, Barbados law, Companies Act, is based on the Canadian Companies Law. It was used as the skeleton, the structure, etc., etc. Barbados law looks to Canadian case law. Canadian case law looks to British case law. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Gannon. And why would we bring in Australia? And I'm Australia, very much. Because the evidence act is based on the Australian evidence act. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to agree with you on that, but I think you are still your point. Okay. So I think the most important thing is that rather than commencing legal action in a non-functioning judiciary, you should look to strengthening the directorship of the companies. And certainly not to have different people on different boards, but you should lobby to get some prominent, respected, trusted, entrepreneurial persons appointed to the boards of these companies so that they can manage those companies in the best interests of the creditors, not of the shareholders, of the creditors. Um, there is also very relevant, I think, the, the legal action that was commenced in Trinidad uh, and it was a bit, it caused a bit of a furor in Barbados because at the point in time 
it was suggested that that injunction, whatever it was, might apply to the company in Barbados. But I think the Barbados government or somebody or other made it clear that that would not be the case. Um, so I emphasize again, the companies may be financially sound, they simply have a liquidity crisis and caused by a loss of confidence. Uh, but I would suggest that the where most of the money has gone is into the Lawrence Dupre investments in Trinidad and in property and Florida. The, the, the assets are there on paper in the form of intercompany loans. Uh, and it, rather than commencing legal action, which I think will go on for five years and not get anywhere, I think that the using the bankruptcy act, disclosure, uh, I, not, no, not bankruptcy, I think you should first try and establish what the real facts are and seek to get disclosure through the, the bankruptcy, the, the provisions within the bankruptcy act, which are primarily provide the appointment of a receiver, but I, I don't know. I would like to mention that I, was, I found it remarkable that there was a, an agreement with between people signed with Mr. David Constant, you see, with Mr. Leroy Paris, whereby five million US 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 dollars, not really us, theirs, <laughs> was signed. Now section eleven of the Exchange Control Act requires the permission of the central bank for any contract in foreign currency. So it's my understanding that that contract is unenforceable at law, unless there is exchange control permission. And I would hope that the central bank would give exchange control permission. But I would like to know who signed the checks for the three million that was paid to Mr. Paris against the ten million dollars under a contract that was outside the world of Barbados. And I have about a hundred other points, but I'm getting the evil eye from the late chairman. <laughs> My understanding is that they are still not making any disbursements, but that all claims were being settled and approved, but put on hold. And apparently there is still some negotiation going on with potential buyers. And, and that is some understanding that I got. So, and that is all that I got. So, the report is the court. There, there is some potential barriers for the organization and some of the properties and so on. But, oh, that's the potential matter. I was hearing a, 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 a thought, a rumor that the Shambarian judicial management is proud. I don't know him. I don't know if there's any truth to it. But if he's here and he would like to share with us anything that he believes can be shared in the public, he would be very grateful. There, is such a, there are many stages of filing an action. What is the file to say itself? Then there's a second stage, which is disclosure. And I think that's going to be the most crucial aspect of any court action. We will obtain disclosure of all the reports which we asked for. There may be an attempt by the person who's been sued or by the entity to secrete information. And we have a facility within the rules to seek further disclosure. And I think at that stage, we will know the true value of the assets. We've been told a number of things the press doesn't speak for the, for the directors at all. That's where they need to pin them down as to the value of the holdings in Barbados in any event. I know that there are other issues in the Eastern Caribbean and they're concerned that they'll be left in, you know, behind along the way. One of the things that will happen with this action is that it will start a whole process where the person who's been sued with the entity we we'll need to get their act together in terms of what they have, what's been invested, how much money was taken, how the money was dispersed, what assets were bought, the value of the assets, what their intention was with the assets, and whether they have invested those particular policies in terms of their principal value wisely. We will then know whether you are simply getting a paper judgment or whether there is something there in the kitty. And when you talk, you mentioned suing the minister. Very difficult to sue the government. 